This video is for those of you who have managed to get out of prototyping hell, where you just have a whole bunch of different mechanics that don't really interact with each other yet, and you have gotten something that actually resembles a bit of a game. There's a playable gameplay loop already, or some of your main mechanics can actually be used standalone already. And this is the point where I always try to say, do your first playtesting as fast as possible. And you guys often agree, you're like, yeah, we should playtest often, but how do you actually playtest? How do you get feedback on your game? And how should you involve all of that playtesting in your development cycle? So we've been experimenting with this a lot with Songs of Everdate especially, because we made the mistake of not playtesting at all with Forge Industry, which has had this whole bunch of issues, so please don't do the same mistake as we do. Try to play test during development already and not just like a month before launch. But there are still a lot of things that I've learned that playtesting, you know, isn't just, oh, I put a demo out there or I put a, a build on edge.io and then I'm gonna get waves of feedback and my game is gonna be great. That's not how it's gonna work. So I wanna talk a bit more about how do you actually do these playtests. But before I get into how you do these playtests, you need to have a little mindset shift before you're going to be able to effectively do these playtests. One of the reasons I see, and you probably don't want to admit this, but you don't want to do playtests 90% of the time because you're scared that people are going to say that your game is dumb, that it's ugly, and that you just wasted a lot of time on a game that nobody asked for. And if you're a small developer, you don't want to get that feedback. So you almost rather prefer just living in blissful ignorance and then dealing with the fact that you never play test once you release your game like half a year from now and nobody wants it then, than having to face it now. However, I know it's going to suck when you get feedback, but it's much more important to do it early on when you're not as attached to your game as well versus when you've spent like a year on development already. And it's also still easier to pivot what your game is going to be exactly. And then also one last thing is I'm mostly going to be talking about playtesting and not just general feedback because you're going to get much more pointed answers about certain game mechanics, for example, that you're not sure about. Actually having people play your demo, have a build somewhere versus sharing GIFs or screenshots to something like Reddit. It can work for if you're like, hey, which UI should I do? Or how does this look? Get a very broad statement, but actually getting in-depth feedback about truly improving your game, you're always going to have to let people actually interact with your game that you're making. GIFs and screenshots, they still have a purpose. It's just not the best for getting really extensive feedback, if you ask me. So that's not what I'm gonna cover here. So first off, when should you do those playtests? I always say as early as possible. A good point is when there's a bit of placeholder art already. So it's not just purely gray boxed or like white boxed. You have some placeholder assets, for example, or you have some key art already of like your main character, for example. So there is at least something visually to just showcase the direction you wanna go with your game. And then also you have a core gameplay loop. So for example, if you're making a shooter game, you have like one stage as like a five to 15 minute run of your game but not all of the mechanics are in there and the UI isn't perfect yet, that's fine. You just wanna have the gameplay nailed down first because that should be your number one priority. Things like UI and visuals, those come in later playtests. But the first thing you should always focus on is, is your game fun and what are the mechanics? Like how playable are they? And then once you have that, you need to go in with a plan. You need to actually work towards a playtest because you shouldn't just upload a build somewhere and then be like, hey guys, let me know your thoughts. This is going to be too broad and you're going to get information about things that honestly, you don't care about that much right now. For example, with Songs of Everjade, we really specify like, hey, look, we want feedback about these mechanics, these specific things is the combat fun because we knew the graphics weren't going to be great yet. We were going to get a lot of feedback on those graphics. We knew that. We even said like, guys, we know that the graphics aren't there yet. And still a lot of people came in and were like, hey, look, I don't know about the graphics. If you don't go in with like a plan of, hey, this is the main feedback point that I want and please ignore the rest of the stuff. Like for example, our sound effects aren't done yet. Then you also make life easier for the playtester because then they don't write a whole essay about something that you're just gonna be like, hey, it's temporary. I don't really care about this at the moment. Like for example, the art or the sound effects, but instead really focus them on, look, what did you like about the combat mechanic? Do you think the movement was too slow, was too fast? How fair did you think the enemies were? What's the time to kill? How would you improve it in that regard? The feedback you're gonna get then is going to be infinitely better than just throwing out a build and being like, hey, let me know your thoughts. And then I would also plan to have somewhat of a timed playtest. So don't just make a playtest build because a playtest is not a demo. You don't want to have your playtest up 
permanently on your Steam page. Have it to be more timed, 48 hours or 72 hours is what we do, and plan around that at, hey look, for 72 hours you can play this game, try to make a little bit of hype or whatever about it if you can, and then take it down again so you can regroup and you can start working on your game again. I'll get into more depth about why you should put a time limit on your playtest in a little bit, but for now, keep that in mind as well. Don't just treat your playtest as a demo and it's up permanently. In regards to that mechanic, like for example, I wanna try out this specific thing, something you can do that's very easy is make a custom build where if you start up the game, you just get like a text popper that's like, hey, thanks for playing the playtest. This and this and this are known issues already, so you don't need to repeat them. And this is what I would like you to go and validate if you like it, yes or no. And it just shows up the moment someone starts the game. So they already know a bit more what should they do. Now, once you have that build, it's time to find people to playtest. And this can be easy and hard at the same time. I think the single best way to get playtesting is by going to a physical event, because you just learn a lot more from standing next to someone, playing your game and seeing, okay, how do they move with their mouse? How do they play the game with their controls even? Because for example, I once went to a playtesting event and there was this studio that was making a shooter game, but I started playing like on my Doom Eternal controls. So basically like a hyperactive squirrel and they were not prepared for that. So I was like breaking their game without them ever having thought that, hey, someone would play like this. Because they could see me actually press the keys, they could much better understand of, okay, why are these things breaking compared to if I just suddenly send a whole long message message about, look, I was clipping through your walls the entire time, or movement was really weird for me. It's just much easier to see in person, where do people get hung up on? So there could be things like local gaming events. They usually have like smaller indie sections, at least in, for example, Europe and North America. There should be some of these that are very affordable to get into as well. Some that we do are like a hundred euros and you have like a day where you can just do playtesting. And the advantage is that there's also players there, not game developers. You also have game dev specific meetups where everybody brings their own game and like all of the game devs playtest each other. This can work as well. And I think especially in the early stages of playtesting, this might be even better because the game developers can give you much more pointed feedback of, okay, this user interaction, like if you could change this menu or if you could change exactly this thing about your mechanic, I think this would make it better. If these kinds of events aren't really possible for you, it gets a little bit harder because then you won't be able to physically see what the person is doing exactly. But some other ways you can do it then is by asking friends or family. This is also a very common one. Maybe you have a whole bunch of gamer friends that you can just send the build over and ask them to play it. Now, what I do suggest is that you ask them to like screen record it and maybe even record a voiceover of what are they thinking and what are they doing? Because once again, it's going to give you the developer a lot more context of, hey, what are they doing in this specific regard? Why are they stuck, for example? What are they thinking of, oh, this gate doesn't seem to open for some reason? Why do they think it is? What should you communicate more clearly to the player through tutorials, through in-game text, for example? And then the last way is the most common one as well, and it is to just make posts, for example, on like a Reddit or on a 9gag with like a picture of your game and like, hey, look, you can play test it right now. The issue here is that one, you're stuck to the algorithm gods. If everyone downvotes your post, immediately you're not going to get a lot of traction and you're not going to get as much context. Sure, some people may still play test the game and leave some thoughts, but it's not going to be as in-depth. One thing that I would suggest here if you go the Reddit route is instead of posting on game dev specific subreddits, find subreddits about games that are similar like yours and then be like, hey, look, I really like XCOM or whatever. So I'm also making a strategy game like inspired by XCOM. I'm currently doing a playtest. There's a link to the Steam page with the playtest like in the description or whatever. If you want, go and try it out and leave me some thoughts. Some subreddits allow this, some don't, but this is another way that you can get people to playtest. And then one that I'm not really certain if it's really that good is devlogs. You know my opinion on devlogs. They're not good for wishlists, but if you are just desperate to getting more feedback, we got a lot of feedback either through the YouTube comments or later on when we started doing playtests as well. A lot of people who watched that video went to the Steam page and also got a playtest for themselves and left us some comments there about what they thought about the game, what you should improve and whatnot. Now, this is how people start playing the playtest. But what's even more important is for you to capture all of that feedback and to actually be able to deal with this. One of my number one tips is to make a Discord server 
for your game and have a button somewhere in your UI of your game, for example, when you're doing that playtest that will bring you directly to that Discord server as well. Because Steam community forums are pretty good for feedback, but it's much slower to have a forum compared to the instant messaging that something like a Discord offers, where if someone sends you a message, you can like immediately reply to it and be like, hey, can you explain a little bit more what the issue is that you're experiencing here? Because once again, you need as much context as possible. And then this is also where I would keep that time limit a bit in mind. You're maybe gonna get a lot of feedback. And one of the big issues that I see is that, okay, I have all of this information coming towards me. Like, let's say that you have 10 people who play your playtest already, and all 10 of them write a community post, they write like their feedback about the game. That's already a lot of information that you are going to have to deal with. And your first urge is going to be to just insta fix every single comment that like one person makes. The problem is, that's still one person's opinion. You need to average these out, you need to group them all together and then parse it all basically, see, okay, what are common things that return and what are some things that are more like polarizing? What are things that certain people absolutely love and others absolutely hate? And you lose that sight if you just immediately fix everything. So really you should just capture all of the feedback for like 48 hours and don't really fix anything unless there's like a bug that the game doesn't start. And only after that, once the playtest is over, you're like, hey everyone, thanks for the playtest. I'm going to go back to development mode now in like two weeks or four weeks or whatever. Let's do another one. And that's when you go through every single piece of feedback and you find out, okay, how would I make this individual issues to put on my issue tracker, for example, so I can solve them. And that's when you get to work. You look at, okay, which ones are important and which ones aren't as priority right now. And that should give you a bit of a better idea of what to focus on. Now, there are three things that I still want you to keep in mind. And the first one is that feedback is going to hurt in certain points. People are going to be like, hey, look, I don't see the value of this game. Why are you making yet another survivor-like or yet another roguelike or yet another card deck builder? Nobody asked for this. Why do you even do this? Similar games already exist. And this is something that, hey, it's going to happen, but I just want to tell you that those comments generally don't put too much weight on it. Because in the end, I like to compare this with uh, the pizzas and the hot dogs. Like, like I like eating pizza. Well, let's say the pizza in this case is Factorio. But that doesn't mean that I don't like to eat anything else. We had this with Forge Industry, where a lot of people were like, why would anyone ever want to play this game? Because we have Factorio already, we have Timberborn, we have Satisfactory, we have Factory Town. And the reason is because we're still a little bit different. People who like playing Factorio generally like to try out different mechanics as well, which is something that we offered with Forge Industry. Sure, some of the automation aspects are exactly the same or don't go into as much depth as Factorio, but other aspects that we have, the other games don't have. So don't worry too much about that feedback. Also, you're always gonna get feedback that your game looks shit probably. Ignore those as well, because you know that, hey, look, this art is going to be temporary and I'm going to work towards something better. It's a very common piece of feedback we get and we already knew this. We even stated like, hey, look, the art is temporary, but still it's something that you'll get feedback about. So be prepared for it. The next thing I want you to keep in mind is that by doing these playtests, you can have a very slippery slope into going from proactive programming, where you make whatever game you wanted to make, to reactive programming, where you just listen to whatever your playtesters have to say and you implement it, no matter what you personally think about it. And sometimes this isn't really the best solution. One great example of this is for Songs of Everjade, we have our garden stage and there's an area inside of the gardens and outside of the like playable area. And both of them have similar kinds of grass tiles. And a piece of feedback that we got from the playtest is that, hey, look, this doesn't make sense. There's grass outside of the playable area because it makes me think that I want to go there, get rid of it. So once the playtest ended, we went through that feedback and we got rid of it. And everyone in our team hates the look. We all are like, this is ugly. This is not what we envisioned. And now we've spent like a week later, we'd like try to get it prettier, but we've decided that look, we still have our own opinions. We still have our own core game vision. We shouldn't just let a few people have a very spoken opinion about it, influence the game that we're making entirely. Their criticism was valid. And we've actually been looking into ways to still improve, making it visible what is playable and what isn't. But we haven't gotten rid of the gross entirely because that is still what we like to do. So with this reactive program, you can almost get the issue that, okay, your playtest is over. And then for the next month, you're just fixing the playtest instead of working on more mechanics. 
not everything such as for example art should be like extremely high priority when your mechanics aren't even fully implemented yet and then lastly not all of the feedback has the same weight similar to for example people who are, are talking about us how the art isn't there yet it's like we know thank you for the feedback but we're not going to do anything with it immediately whereas feedback for example about okay look the combat if there were some some iframes it would be really nice those are things we can easily do or for example graphics wise there was an easy win as well with like oh all of our sprites had no shadows yet let's just add some shadows and that's an other easy win those are things that we can easily do that don't take too much time and that we can do basically the day of the playtest still but other pieces of advice where it's like make an entire shop system or do a little city builder aspect as well where you manage your entire chinese sect those don't carry as much weight for us and because it's only like one person who says it as well so it's very biased and it's not what we originally envisioned and it's massive scope creep it would be like two three months of extra development at least so those we put very low on the list or we just say like look we are not doing this another very common one is multiplayer people ask us for multiplayer but it's not going to happen because that's not the scope we set out for initially so we just say no Anyways, I hope this helps you a little bit with getting feedback and actually playtesting your game. If you stuck around till now, I also want to just like plug our Discord a little bit because one of the developers in our Discord actually showcased his playtest and he has gotten a surprisingly high amount of people writing very constructive feedback about how he can improve the game, what they found good about the playtest, what they didn't really like. And that has really allowed that one developer to get a lot of feedback piggybacking off our like community. So it could be interesting for you. I put a link to the Discord down below. If you have something that is like play testable that you want to get more feedback off, send it out there. And I think that some other developers will definitely be able to help you a bit more. Anyways, that's all I really have to say. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, we're game developers. We've made our own game. We're working on the development of our next game. And we just talk about the entire development process. So if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to head down below and subscribe as it really helps us out because I know that you like these kinds of videos and in exchange, you get these videos twice a week talking about game development. That's all I really have to say. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.